Hello again, this time we're going to learn about the OCaml system. Uh, if you have reached this video, then I think you should be confident enough to uh, try and access the module system in OCaml, try to check what modules are there, which is available, you know, what is available, what is not, what functions you can do with, for example, the uh, pervasives module or with on strings, we'll come to strings in the common videos or lists, as I said before, probably I will be recording a different tutorial on uh, data structures in OCaml in general. What what do we mean by the OCaml system? Well, if you uh, open your web browser and go to Google and just search for the OCaml system, then you will probably get as the first hit, you will get this link here from the NREA. Um, and there, they release um, the OCaml system with different releases as you can see here. Now for the search results when you go to this link here you probably get a different version by now they must be they keep updating OCaml in general but if you go to the OCaml system you know that's the release as you can see if you navigate down then you will find a nice introduction to OCaml I encourage you to read through that you will learn more than uh, what I actually give in these videos uh, some more about the language itself but what I wanted to show you is something at the very bottom here as you can see we have an index of modules i.e. a list of all the modules or a list of the existing libraries as if you like in OCaml and here they are uh, ordered alphabetically so you can see um, R for parsing of you know command line arguments uh, array for the array operators the array data structure for big int when you have large uh, you know arbitrary pre arbitrary precision integers or large integers maybe a large big array for large multi-dimensional arrays uh, numerical arrays in particular anyway you will find a lot of modules you know, for the character mo operations um, <coughs> and what I wanted to show you here for example is you know I remember we spoke about hash tables before when we demonstrated memoization and the trick to avoid um, repeating calculating the same thing all over and over again and for the list as well list data structure um, for the map data structure for um, you know the queue and to, for scanning formatted input functions for scanf you must be familiar with scanf from from C and we have we also have printf actually Unix module for Unix system this is quite powerful what I want to show you here, for example, is either for the string or for the list. Anyway, if you click on any of these, let's, for example, take an example of the string. If you click of, on any of these, you should find more information about that module, what it does, what it doesn't do, and then a list of functions. Uh, length, for example, it gives you the length of a string. So I'm sure you're familiar now with the format or the input and output of a function. It takes a string as input, returns an int as an output to get a certain character maybe receives a string and then a character um, index and returns that character index and the string so that's how it works string dot get we provide a string and we provide an integer like a character index and we will get that the character at that index uh, the good thing is that it gives you an explanation of the function and then how you should use it yes so this one is with two variables remember when we pass two arguments, we don't have to use parentheses and column. I'm um, sorry, and common things as, as we uh, as we do in Java or C, unless if we specify that the input of the function is actually a tuple. Anyway, that's how you do it. That's how you access different modules. That's for the, for a string, uh, scanf as we said before, for the printf here. Uh, maybe going back to um, the list module, the linked list module. Some functions are flagged as not tail recursive will probably explain what a tail recursive function is in the coming videos um, but anyway the length of a, st of, of a list we pass it a list R remember that uh, apostrophe a means a list is polymorphic ie it can it can accept any type it receives a list and returns an end which is the length of a string hd for head the first element in in a list so it returns an element of a list whereas tail returns a sub, a sub list all the elements except the first except the head 
inf what element in that string and all that re rev reverses a string or re list reverser as you can see here so anyway this is how you can do it and these are some more functions we'll come to that in the coming videos but enough talking let's have a look how we can do that from our top level or top level I was playing about here don't worry about this um, so remember that you just do OCaml if you want to access the top loop or top level and then by the way to exit you either do control D so you do control plus D with, with your keyboard or you just type quit with two semicolon I'm sorry yeah no with, with this sign so hash quit double semicolon and you are out of the top level or top loop in fact let me just clear the screen so we are at somewhere at the top what have I done? clear yes yeah so let's clear the screen and then go back to OCaml now if you want to open a module and then you know a list of you have a, you know what, what, what's in that, that module if you want to open and use it if you want to use a module or a function inside the module you can either use the module name so a list dot for example as we learned here for example uh, head, dot head dot hd so list dot hd and then you provide a list so a list looks like this in OCaml uh, with these square brackets so for example one a list of integers one two three four usually they are uh, separated by elements of a list are separated by semicolon and then I do double semicolon and I get the first one which is the head if I want for example tail of a list ie all the elements except the first so head returns an element and tail returns a sublist it return back a sublist remember lists on OCaml are uh, sort of uh, represented by these square square brackets and elements are separated by semicolons likewise for the string I can use a string remember notice it's a, it, starts, it actually starts with a capital letter you know the name of uh, of um, a module let's go back to the string module for example and maybe use a quick function um, <coughs> where is it now? string and then we, which one let's do for example the get here yeah? so we provide a string and an in so let's for example say string dot get and then we give it a string so for example test and then say give me the third uh, character and returns t so remember that the index starts at zero so that, that's character number character 0 that's the E is 1 the S is 2 and the T is 3 if I pass it 4 it won't like it and this would be a good uh, time to actually do some exception handling anyway I just wanted to show you how this works how to access the module system how to use existing functions however for example if you want to see a list of um, functions inside the module from the top level now I don't know of a certain way of how to do this like by the way um, when I said for example you can do quit these are called directives so this quit is the directive it starts with a hash if you remember the trace function or and the untrace these are called um, directives and there there's more of them so for example if you want to open a module you can do that here but anyway if you want to see a list of functions inside a module I know of a string where we can create maybe a sort of um, so we can have a trick of like for example we define an alias for a module yes we define remember this we define an alias for a module and by that we can see um, sort of the signature of a model so we can see what's inside it what do I mean by an alien uh, 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 an alias so we have for example module string what I can do is I can say module maybe uh, s equals string so what will happen is s will be an alias for string s but when I do that it g actually gives me a list of all the functions inside module string yes and now if I want to use any of these I just have a look at the function uh, see what it does yes see for example at least the required um, parameters or arguments so for example for sub obviously receives a string int int and returns a string that's for a substring I can see how it works and then in my code I can actually use it if I say s dot sub and then give it a string test so for example this is 
a test and then give it start and end index from 2 to 4 to 6 for example it gives me back a substring from 2 to s is space is space so um, no that's not um, start and end that's probably hold on let's try it again Why is that giving back? Is, is I have no idea to be honest but we'll come to that later anyway in, in, in when we uh, study the string I uh, don't remember but anyway I'm sure you get the idea at least of how these things work and then if you want to actually you know get rid of using s dot or list dot or string dot you can just say open string and that will open the module string for you and then you can uh, use these things for example without having to do string dot or list dot as we did before so if we, if we do the get now if we copy and paste this here without having to do string dot then it should do the same thing it's telling me invalid argument because we are out of range but what I say 3 should return T I hope this is making sense just I wanted to show you how to use the module system and how to have a, how to see a list of functions and then how to use them from your code hopefully by now you are getting familiar with OCaml you are becoming more comfortable with using it and uh, it won't be long and we will start actually putting our code into a source file and then compile and run it from a beautiful command line thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you next time control D to exit remember or hash quit double semicolon and we're out